Builders coming at it. Bowler over on the far side. Bowler just in front. Rocket Horse is in for the fight. Bowler and Rocket Horse, they hit it. Bowler. Welcome to this week's edition of The Final Gallop. It is episode 283 and is proudly supported by the Brisbane Airport Hotels Group. Uh, this week we are going to preview our runners for Saturday's Brisbane Racing Club meeting at Doomben. Morning, Tony. It'll be good to get back to Doomben on Saturday after their last Saturday meeting was abandoned. Yeah, it will be, Claire. Good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, we'll be good to get back to Doomben and see how, see how that track's playing. Obviously, Eagle Farm played a little bit different last week than mm -hmm. what anyone anticipated. It's obviously a little bit going on there at the moment. It chopped right up and it, it visually looked worse than a soft six. Yep. And I think it rode a lot worse. However, the times were relative of the rating. So it was a tricky day at Eagle Farm last week. A lot of, lot of our horses ran well mm -hmm. without getting a win, but I uh, really hope we can get that track back where it was leading into this winter carnival, which is just around the corner. You know, when the championships are on in Sydney, yep. Not but our away. carnival is just following straight on. So we're going to get back to Dooman. Um, obviously, the weather's just starting to cool off now. You can see us in our jackets here at track work the last couple of mornings. Mm -hmm. Uh, and a little bit of a winter carnival feel about things already. Absolutely. Okay, before we get into the preview, it's time for our re regular yearling spotlight segment. And this week we are going to talk about the Farnan Alta Stella filly that you purchased late on Monday at the Inglis East Yearling Sale for $100,000. It was a really good value for a stakes, uh, being from a stakes before mare by one of the hottest uh, first crop size in the Golden Slipper winner Farnan. Yeah, she was. She's a beautiful filly. It was, it was quite a unique sale, Easter. It's two yeah. days and it's jam-packed full of some massive lots. And I know all the talking points obviously being the Winx mm. filly that went through, and that was quite a remarkable experience to be there to watch a filly like that get sold for $10 million. The bidding was quite extraordinary. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's always a sale that if you, if you do the work, which John does, John Foote, he yeah. does all the work, you, you can get a bargain at it. And I know you read about all the highlights and the, mm -hmm. big, the big lots down there, and there's plenty of them, them big colts and them really well-bred fillies. But if you do your work, you'll find fillies with a, an Easter pedigree, which this filly does have, mm -hmm. um, that you can sneak and buy. And we've been, I've been dying to buy Farnham all year. Okay. I, I do think, from what we've seen now, now we've been through all the sales cycle from January right through, I probably think he looks the most likely first season. Okay. I mean, he is a yep. golden slipper, yep. slipper winner um, by, by not a single doubt who's who's done a job at stud already, producing extreme choice. Yes. Who's done it, who's doing a job. So I've been dying to get a sort of get a fun. I didn't know if I would as the mm -hmm. year went on. We've just been sort of trying to find one that fitted in our, in our price bracket. And we're lucky enough with Newgate to negotiate a nice deal to buy her for a hundred grand. She's a beautiful filly, very precocious, yeah. very athletic. Um, she's a filly I suspect to be up and going at two. She's got good speed all through her pedigree. I wanted to go and buy a fast filly and and this is the yeah, filly we've come across. So I think she's an absolute ripper. Yeah. She's everything I wanted to buy out of Easter, and I feel we got her at the right price. So we were down there to try and shop around the edges. Yeah. We weren't going to bang away at the big bucks, and I'm really happy with her. Okay, so if you are interested in taking a share in this fun and filly, um, she will fill very quickly. So please get in contact with us at sales at golanracing.com. Dot au or just reach out to any one of us um, directly. Okay, onto the preview of our runners for Doomben on Saturday. The rail will be in the three and a half metre position. The track is currently a soft six with the forecast uh, for sunny days ahead. So it's every likelihood we'll probably get back to a good four, do you think? I hope so. It's about to have really good weather between now and the weekend. And, you know, any rain does affect the tracks a lot more now because obviously these mornings yeah. are starting to cool off and we'll start to get a couple of dews, etc. But um, I think we get back to a good four, and that three and a half metre rail at Doomin's our best rail. It's our fairest track. Okay. You can win from anywhere provided you get the right run in transit. Okay, we are starting in race four, and uh, our runner in that race is Osamu. He'll carry 57 and a half kilos with Jimmy Orman on board. He's drawn barrier five. He's currently paying $11 to win and $2.40 for the place. He is second up on Saturday, coming off a pretty good first up run where he worked uh, to the lead uh, just tiring late. Uh, has two wins when second up, include, including last preparation, and he has drawn well. He's drawn well, he's a go forward horse around Doomben. He, um, the 1200 is the query, isn't it? You know, if it was a thousand, a thousand and fifty, he'd be pretty keen mm -hmm. that he'd run really well. And I, I still think he will run well. Run, run well. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, the favourite, got to give some respect to her, Chinny Boom. She's got an outstanding race record. Um, this place going, going good. I mean, he'll run well, he'll, he'll race up on speed, he'll be nice and tough. It's just whether he sees out the 1200. Okay. That's going to be the question. Okay. We'll pop down to race five now, which is the benchmark 70 handicap over the 1600. 
and 15 metres. Blazing Boots runs 58 and a half kilos. Ryan Maloney will ride. Barrier 7, he's paying $7 to win and $2.60 for the place at the moment. He is third up now and will be very fit for this. Just got held up behind runners last start but was pretty strong to the line. Uh, he did win at this track and trip third up last preparation and you have made a gear change putting the blinkers back on. Yeah, it was a messy the other day. They had to reshoe behind the gates and just everything got a bit worked up and he just, just doesn't love racing in a restricted room, no. this horse. So I'll put the blinkers on to try and aid that and see if that just helps him when things do get a bit tight. Um, he's obviously up into a grade now where he's got to execute his races better. Yeah. The month between runs is ideal for him. We did it last prep and he won. Um, I was keen to replicate that. Blinkers in his work don't make him any keener. They just seem to focus him nice. So okay. they've been on previously when, when Chris Waller trained him. As a, as a lower grade horse, obviously on heavy tracks and stuff like that. So I was keen enough to try them again, mm -hmm. ride him in the same way. I think he finds a spot from where he's drawn probably third pair here, just forward and midfield with a bit of cover, looking to get to the outside and dash on him. If he can react well in the shades and not overdo it, which I'm really hopeful he can, mm -hmm. he's certainly going to get the right run. I feel he's found his right race to run very, very well in. Okay. We'll go to race six now, which is the Benchmark 78 handicap over the 1110 metres. We will have three runners in this. We'll start with Michelle, 58.5 kilos with CJ Graham's 1.5 kilo claim. Um, Mushy's drawn barrier five. He's paying $11 to win uh, and $3.24 the place. Was pretty good first up, uh, then had to come from a wide draw and was never a chance last start, one at this track and trip last preparation and is drawn to get a pretty good run. Yeah, he's running at a much better run. Mm. He, he was sort of you know, back and wide and pushed wider the other day and his run wasn't all that bad. It, he was a lot shorter in the market and it just didn't, didn't work out at all where I feel that you know, third up doom and that surface will suit him. He'll just jump and you'll you find a lovely spot just behind speed and he race really well. I think the low draw is the key to him really. Okay. I, um, I can't sort of understand the market shift away from him. Here he was he was short enough in the market the other day and I just thought he mapped awful. Mm -hmm. Where this this week I think he maps really well. He'd be third pair here, something like that, just behind what looks to be a good enough speed and be very competitive. That horse that beat him at the Gold Coast come out and won again and won that race the other day. So yeah. and he got the soft run again where we didn't. So like I, I feel with a, a good run in transit, there's no reason he can't be competitive. Okay, second runner we'll talk about is Shamrock Lou. He'll carry 60 kilos. Michael Rod will ride. Barrier six, Shammy's over there. Entertaining himself at the back of the box, doing some weird stuff, but anyway. Um, Shamrock Lou is paying $21 to win and $5 for the place. Very unlucky uh, last start when first up and he had to cross over heels to get out and he does have a pretty good second up record. Yeah, I'll give him a really good break into that run the other day. He wasn't really first up, he was just a sort of a fresh in. And yeah. he, um, he's still looking for a run really. He's just never got clear running any, any, stretch of the, any stretch of the straight. He never really was able to get at him, Michael Rod. Um, he wasn't even blowing when he came in. I could have sent him around two races later. Mm -hmm. This is an ideal race for him. He's drawn well again. Rod knows him. He'll lob into a nice spot. He'll be somewhere similar to where Michelle will be, okay. just in behind speed and just need room at the right time. He looks brilliant, the horse. He's going super. I know he hasn't won for a while, so this is the sort of race he, he's... If everything goes right for him, this is the race he's really got to you know, put his hoof forward and, and do the job because he is in good shape. Okay, third runner is a moral 58.5 kilos. Jimmy Orman rides barrier one. He's paying $10 to win and $3 for the place. Uh, was a pretty good hidden run last start from a wide gate. Drawn to get a, a really good run and does have a good record at this track. I think I said straight after that run to Eagle Farm, if he draws low his next start, he, he's, he's right there to yeah. win. and. That's what he's done. Ormond on, good draw. He just needs the luck in running, doesn't he? All he those horses it. come out of that same race. And if you watch that race a few times, you'll see a bunch of good runs in it. And they were all really good runs. Is that the right form for this? Or is the, you know, the Ma, Ma mm -hmm. runner coming from Sydney, is that the right form? Is your price favourite at 250? I don't know. I think um, they're all competitive horses at this grade, this, mm -hmm. this bunch. And uh, luckily, they've all drawn low. So I'm going to sit on the fence with our sit three. Okay. With yeah. our three, I am. I think it's a very competitive race. and. I think all three of ours are actually over the odds off their last starts. Okay. Race seven is a three-year-old Phillies handicap over 1,350 metres. We have Tora Bella in this, 53 and a half kilos with Angela Jones riding. She's drawn at barrier two. She's paying $2.40 for the win and $1.35 for the place. Uh, a very impressive filly, this three-quarter sister to the multiple group one winner shootout. She's won her first two starts impressively from the front. Does drop back to the 1,350 for this and gets in really light uh, with the top weight being much higher in the ratings. Yeah, yeah handicap conditions gets in really well here, half under 54, 53 half. She gets in beautifully, low draw, roll forward, makes her own luck. She'll either lead or be anywhere in the first three or four. She's mm -hmm. not 
one trick pony. Um, I thought her second up run at the mile the other day was great because Ange did a bit on her early and she got, got quite keen down the back. So I, I don't think stepping back to 13.50 with a good space between runs is any, any issue with her. And Boyd, boy, how well she worked here Tuesday. She's in good order. She's very fit, very healthy. Mm -hmm. She's a bunch better looking filly than what she was first up at 13.50. So yep. um, I think at the weights, she's the right filly here. Whatever, whatever can beat her at handicap conditions here, Saturday will earn their money. Okay. Uh, race 8 is the open quality handicap over the 1,350 metres. Ranch Hand will run in this. He will carry 56 kilos with Ryan Maloney in the saddle, drawn barrier 1. He is paying $3.80 for the win and $1.75 for the place. Uh, third up now for his preparation coming up a couple coming off a couple of flashing light runs over the 1,200 metres, out to the 13.50 and drawn again to get a good run. Drawn beautifully here this time. All has been him really. His last couple has probably been the draws. He just got back into tricky spots and his last run at Eagle Farm was huge and indicates nice. he wants this sort of trip. I've gone a month between runs with a with a jump out at um, a Deegan in between on a heavy track. So he's certainly fit enough. He looks great. His work's been good. He um, that's probably his, and probably one of his best ever second up runs yeah. was the other day since we've had him. So when we had him the other day second up, this is probably one of his best in his entirety. Um, so you'd imagine third up he'll race well. He'll just bury away on the fence go to sleep. He could even be third defence here. It mm -hmm. doesn't really matter. Just jump out quiet on him and he looks the right horse here. I think this race is tricky. The market won't know what to do with this yet because a couple of these horses, him and at wit's end, which two of the major mm -hmm. fancies, both scratched out of the 1200 for this. Mm -hmm. um, and then you've got a bunch of horses here that are really good at the mile or even a touch further where the market sees them in this field. But I think it's the ideal distance for him. Okay. The low draw is very, very important. Um, I think he'd be awfully hard to beat. Okay, we'll go to race nine now, which is the benchmark 78 handicap over the 1,350 metres as well. Three runners, Brentwood will carry 60 kilos. Jimmy Orman will ride him from barrier 13. He is paying $7.50 to win and $2.70 for the place. He was pretty disappointing last out at Eagle Farm after three good runs to start his preparation. He does prefer racing at this track, but he's drawn a little bit awkward. Yeah, he has. He's drawn a bit tricky, but he's got Orman back on. I mm. think she went, Ange just went way too slow on him in front the other day, and he just didn't allow him to breathe and flow mm. in the run, and he just choked himself down. Um, different scenario, I think, with Jimmy on him. He'll step and race well. This this race is the epitome of the get-out stakes, yeah. I reckon, the last on Saturday. Yeah. It's a big field. It's as open as the yeah. as the, the Sydney heads. It's yeah. huge. It, you know, you, whatever you like in it and whatever you back, you're going to get value. It's that sort of race. I think the market will change around a lot mm -hmm. before that race. So he's a very competitive horse at this grade. You've only got to go back all preparation, how well he's been racing prior to Eagle Farm. Yeah. And I'll just totally put a line through that run and you'll see him back to his absolute best Saturday. Okay, second runner we'll talk about is Sonora. She'll carry 59 kilos. Ryan Maloney will ride. She's drawn <laughs> awful in barrier 18. She's paying $13 to win and $4.20 for the place. Uh, she is a newcomer to the stable um, and by So You Think. Uh, that did win for a previous yard two starts ago before getting tired late under a big weight. Um, gets the car park draw, as I said, for her welcome to Queensland. Yeah, she does, but she's a lovely go forward horse. 13.50 started don't panic too much about that. Um, she's got the SF, the Sydney form, as mm. they call it. So she's got some decent form enough. I've been really happy with the way she's settled in and her work since she's been here. She's been terrific. Mm -hmm. Track work's been great. She's very fit. Obviously, when you get them from the Mar team, they're, they're very fit when they get to you. And she's nice and fit. She's nice and healthy. She's a go forward runner. Uh, the only thing I will say, I think she'll find the tempo a little bit different here in Queensland. Yeah. She's really dominated a race I see at Canterbury a few runs back at 1500 and she just blows away where they'll go quick enough here. I don't see her leading but I see her somewhere in the first three pairs and if Ryan can get a bit of luck from the barrier down the back straight and what she showed me in track work and I think in her best form she can run really well. Okay, third runner is Argyle Pink, 58 kilos. Angela Jones rides Pinky. Um, she's drawn barrier four. She's paying $7.50 to win and $2.70 for the place. She toughed it out for a good win first up over the 1200 metres. She does rise to 13.50, a distance she's been really consistent at um, and has drawn well. Yeah, and we can ride her wherever, wherever we like yeah. really off a low draw. There's a bit of pressure here. She'll just jump and the other day we had to off a wide draw jump and be a bit positive on her and, and sit outside lead and she was really, really good. There was a couple of hard luck, hard luck stories just behind her, but there was no doubt she was open to improvement, which she's found. I mm -hmm. love the way she's done since that first up run and I, I really like her back at Dooman mm -hmm. at 1350. I think the track over the surface really suits her. Um, so she'll be up on pace, whether she leads or whether she's in the first four. 
I can certainly see her running really, really well. How are you going to split those three? Um, I don't know if I want to. I think that race is awfully open. I think you can have a few bets in the last, to be honest. I'd, I want to see what the market does. I'll look at final scratchings at 7.30 and I'll sort of make my decision. But I think all three of mine are pretty pretty, um, pretty close. Okay. There's not a lot, a lot of... A lot of there's not a lot separating them, and that's me not knowing Sonora under our race conditions yet. Okay. We are under the final furlong of this week's final gallop. Who is your best winning chance at Doomben on Saturday? I've got to toss up between a couple, I think, but I'm going to go with Tora Bella. Okay. I like her, I think she's a really quality filly, and I see her going from this race, you know, into the start of the Princess Series in the winter. Okay, and your best each-way chance? I don't know if he's each-way odds. He's probably a little bit short for each way odds. I tossed up between a couple and actually no, I was going to say Ranch Hand. Yeah. He's, he's four bucks twenty I think he's getting out to at the moment so he's just each way. Yeah. I'd be shocked if he misses the top three but I'm going to go with the moral. Okay. I think one alley, he's just drawn to get the right run. He screamed the other day of a horse that's busting to win and I love the way he looks so I think one alley and moral he always runs good off those low draws. He does. Uh, your best at the Provincials uh, over the next few days, Sunshine Coast Friday and Sunday and Toowoomba on Saturday night. Oh, she's tough. Sunshine Coast, you don't know if you're getting grass or poly, so yeah. I, I don't want to put my head on the chopping block there. Um, we've got a few up in Toowoomba on, on Saturday night. Jeez, it'd be tough, man, tipping Greylander. <laughs> Wouldn't know if he's run the other day. But I think class one, 1,200, you know, back to 1,200 yeah. off 1,350. Provincial grade, he, he's got to show something. I think he's he's up there, top three. Okay, your best track worker this week? Torabella was brilliant. Ranch hands flying as well. Mm -hmm. um, really happy with him. A moral gallop, really nice in company with um, with Shamrock Lou. They work terrific. So there's a few nice horses there, but Torabella, she she's just a the way she's working, the way she's looking and pressing forward in her prep, that little gap between runs done at the world of good, and she looks super. Okay, and your performance from the stable for the week. I don't know much to ride home about last Saturday. It was some, some good runs there. Mm -hmm. Mullane had to just have his head been a little yeah. bit longer. He'd be the performance to bounce back, obviously, after being much maligned. Everyone's a bit dirty on Mullane. Everyone's too. a bit dirty on Mullane. But, so I'm not going to say him, obviously, because he got beat. Uh, yesterday, I love the winner of all school exceed speed. Yeah. I thought he was great. He's, you can still see he's a work in progress, yeah. but he just got the feel of a nice horse, I think, and he's just going to take a bit of racing and a bit more time, but he's a, he's a nice animal. So exceed speed it is for me Okay. in uh, the famous Mike Byers colours. Yes, yes. Okay, now it is time for Cavs Corner, which is supported by the Brisbane Airport Hotels uh, Group. Uh, just missed his multi last week. He landed his first leg with Sacred Feeling Placing, but missed his second leg with Star of Chaos for the win. She finished a close second. Uh, let's see if he can go one better for you this week. Welcome to Cavs Corner for this week. Uh, this week we'll venture to Doombin. Uh, <coughs> we'll go Torabella a win. Into Argyle Pink a win. The pressure's on Ange, but hopefully she's up to it. Good punning, guys. So he's gone Torabella a win into Argyle Pink a win. Back to win-win. He's Chopping and changing. Oh, he's a heavy ladies man too. He's gone. Yeah, he the, is, he's gone yes. the two fillies or Philly and the mare. Yeah. That's, that's Cav. Yeah, but, pff, down to a T. Yeah, but I look. I don't know. I think I think Argyle Pink will run really, really well. Um, that just I think that last race is very open. Mm -hmm. it'll, be, it's a, it'll be a good price multi um, if you get it. That's for sure and certain. I'm surprised he hasn't gone win place, but who am I to argue with the multi man? Exactly right. Anyway, good luck at Dooman on Saturday. Good chance. Good chances in each race from the fourth right down to the last. Yeah, we got a little bit of a late start, which I don't mind. You can see how the track's playing in that. Like, evident yesterday at Ipswich, we got Peter Snout in the first. Yeah. Um, and it was obvious to see that fence was absolutely rat shite as the, as the day went on. Yeah. So had we have been able to get off that fence in the first, we probably trained a double there yesterday instead of instead of the one winner. But So it's good to be able to start at race four. We can see how, how Dooman's playing early. Mm -hmm. And um, hopefully we can, you know, if you follow the state, we can steer you into some winners throughout the day. Absolutely. Best of luck to everyone.